Hello, I'm Caroline CSC. Welcome to a new week of Bread to Win. Coming up, an in-depth look at the huge opportunities available through Dali Australia to breed to four wonderful sons of breed shaper Shamadal, Pinatubo, Victor Ladorum, Earthlight and Blue Point. And Sedgen Ho starts Brian Clark in Arrowfield starts the horsey made you love racing. But first, plenty happening in the thoroughbred world. Let's catch up on the Oz Horse News of the Week. While the world is mourning the loss of one of the greatest leaders in global history, the racing and breeding industry remember Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II as one of the greatest proponents of the thoroughbred in the world. The Queen will be remembered best by so many of us for her striking regal appearances at Royal Ascot, in particular her unbridled joy at the win of her wonderful mare estimate in the 2013 Ascot Gold Cup. Her knowledge of thoroughbred bloodlines and the animal itself was unrivalled. The Australian Turf Club, one of only two race clubs in the world to have a race course with the Royal Prefix Royal Randwick, held a fitting tribute at Saturday's Rose Hill meeting, commemorating the Queen's many visits to Australia with her famous racing silks on display and a minute silence around the course. Thoroughbred Breeders New South Wales held their annual awards on Saturday at Rose Hill, attracting a number of major breeders and sponsors to honour the successes of the state breeding industry in the past season. The New South Wales President's Small Breeders Award went to Matthew Irwin, who bred Dewey and Baccarat Baby from his mare Mearlust. Champion New South Wales broodmare was Mullover, dam of this year's Golden Slipper winner Fireburn, while Rebel Dane won the award as champion two-year-old sire, with both awards accepted by Laurel Oaks, Louis Mahika and a large contingent of owners. She's clearly an outstanding broodmare. Uh, she's got a two-year-old now coming through. It looks like he's got ability. Missed the next season, so, so we're just hoping that she can continue a brilliant legacy that she's started here. But we really appreciate what she's done for us. We appreciate the award. Champion New South Wales broodmare sire was the late great Arrowfield stud stallion Redoute's choice. With his daughters producing Group 1 winners last season, including Animo, Hitotsu, Profondo and Regal Power. Champion first season sire was Newgate Farm's Russian Revolution, while the big gong for champion New South Wales stallion was won by Yarraman Park's champion Australian sire, I Am Invincible. Generous auction items from Coolmore Stud, Godolphin Stud, Binary Stud and Silverdale Farm resulted in some spirited bidding that netted Thoroughbred Sport Horse Association over $13,000 to go towards prize money for thoroughbred classes in New South Wales. In secrets, lengthening the outside. Saturday's Rose Hill Garden meeting threw up a couple of exciting Godolphin three-year-olds with the filly in secret beating the boys in the Group 2 run to the Rose. By champion Australian sire, I am invincible from Schwazir Mare eloping in secret was bought by the Dali Godolphin team for $900,000 at the Magic Millions yearling sale. I Am Invincible already has two stakes winners this season and is fourth on the general sires list behind four-time champion sire Snitzel. While eloping fold a filly, full sister to In Secret at the weekend. In Secret was bred by Michael Christian's Longwood Farm in Victoria in partnership with Sedgenho and the I Am Invincible Choisir Nick has a 100% strike rate of 11 winners from 11 runners. Got the upper hand though, Golden Mile, and is drawn clear here in the Ming Dynasty. It was a Dali group double when their support of their Golden Rose winner Astern as a stallion resulted in his son winning the Ming Dynasty quality and heading for a Golden Rose attempt himself. Golden Mile's dam, Calaverite, was a gym crack and St Albans stakes winner by Lonro, while a stern is by Medalia Doro from the great Trisquet family of Elise and La Baraka. He stands this season at Dali, New South Wales, at a fee of only $11,000. Prime candidate just in front from Jamea. Kiku wide out with a big run. A Carbine Club stakes winner over the famous Randwick Mile. Kiku may be heading there again for the Epsom after a strong win in the Group 2 Theo Mark stakes. A $300,000 Magic Millions yearling, the full sister to Newmarket handicap winner Zutori. Kiku was sold by Amarina Farm to Denise Martin and Star Thoroughbreds. Zustar has the book full sign up at Widden Stud this year at a fee of $198,000.
More than ready, Mayor Rose of Mulan had a wonderful day with two stakes winners in different states. Shades of Rose, racing in the colours of her breeders, Steve and Louise Gillard, won the Group 2 Scirocco stakes as a daughter of Swetnam Studs Rubik, while at Flemington, Scolopini, an eight-year-old son of Rose of Mulan and four-time champion Sire Snitzel took out the listed Sofitel. Rose of Mulan's dam, Lady Mulan, was a top filly of her own generation, winning the Light Fingers and the Adrian Knox stakes. Alligator blood tiring. I'm thunderstruck over the top. Also at Flemington, the Group 1 feature, the Maccabi Diva Stakes, was part of a great day for New Zealand's Rich Hill start. I'm Thunderstruck's win in the Maccabi Diva added to victories in the Turak and the Golden Eagle and second placings in the All-Star Mile, the Doncaster and Memsey Stakes, earning his OTI connections over $7 million. His sire Shocking won the same race 12 years ago, now stands at Rich Hill at a fee of $12,500 NZ plus GST. Shocking's barnmate Poisier sired the winner of Australasia's other Group 1 on Saturday, the Tarzino Trophy at Hastings in New Zealand. Dark Destroyer won the Rough Habit Plate in Brisbane in the winter and is from an all-American mare. His sire Poisier, a Choisier half-brother to Divine Prophet, stands at Rich Hill at a fee of $12,500 NZ plus GST. And finally, from Flemington on Saturday, the Let's Elope Stakes went to Ridden Tycoon's Kiss on All Four Cheeks, a former high-class West Australian race mare from the Black Friars mare Rosie Rocket, who's also a multiple stakes winner in the West. This week's English Digital Sale wraps up on Wednesday, and one of the highlights is the Snitzel mare Vol Pine, winner of the Winona Girl, the Starlight and Hortensia Stakes. She's from the famed Chiara family of Star Witness and Nostradamus, and bidding ends for the early September sale on Wednesday, September 14. About a length and a half, two lengths, Clarity, then same magic, Nana Guy. The English Graduate of the Week has a wooden stud flavour with Nanagai from the final crop of late Golden Slipper winner Sebring, successful in the listed Capped on Team Stakes at Flemington. Nanagai is from the dual stakes winning Shamadal Mare Shamalia. She was bred by Mike Howard and sold by Blue Gum Farm at last year's English Premier Yearling Sale in Melbourne, bought by Rosemont Stud for $450,000. And Sebring's son, Cepedo, also signed a Flemington Stakes winner on Saturday with Buenos Noches, successful in the listed Poseidon Stakes. He was an English Classic Sale graduate sold by Widden Stud from the Northern Meteor, Mare Coy. It was a first stake success for Cepedo as a sire he stands at Widden this season for only $8,800. Time for a break on Bread to Win. Coming up, the Cambridge Stud Performance of the Week and Dali Stud's great opportunities for mare owners through their four sons of Shamadal. Coming home strongly now, Dynastic. Hold in there, kicking hard, finding like a very good horse. And what a return, Dynastic. The Cambridge Star Performance of the Week saw the return to the winner's list of the Caracas Millions winner by their young sire, Al Manzor. Dynastic was strong to the line in the listed Colin Meads Trophy at Hastings and heads towards the Group 1 New Zealand 2000 Guineas. He's from the Volksrad Mare Mia from the family of Lady Lafay and Eagle Mountain. Dynastic sire Al Manzor by Wooten Bassett has also sired a number of second crop stakes winners in Europe this current flat season. Dali Stud has a great record of bringing some of the most influential global stallions to Australia, not least of all the sire of the mighty Winx, Street Cry. Basically a nephew of Street Cry, Shamadal, a breed shaper himself, has also had a huge influence in Australia and that's set to continue through the sons of Shamadal standing out here this year, Pinatubo, Victor Ladorum, Earthlight and Blue Point.
Alice, it's just a beautiful day here at Kelvin side. I mean, it's wonderful the rain that has made everything so green and maybe a bit too much rain, but it is just glorious this time of the year. It is. Um, we're having a fantastic season. Um, New South Wales has never looked so good. And, uh, you know, this is why when you want to live in the Hunter Valley. We've already you know, had a lot of people through um, admiring our new stallions and uh, we expected a positive response and we've got it. They're great horses and, and they look the part. But Karen McAvoy on Shamadal is going to romp home with the St James's Palace Stakes. Well, we're looking at Shamadal and the sons of Shamadal. I mean, the influence that this stallion has worldwide is quite astronomical, but I'm always really interested in looking back at them as racehorses, some of these great stallions. And people forget what a champion racehorse he was. was. He won the Dewhurst, the French 2000 Guineas, French Derby, and St James's Palace Stakes. That is one elite racehorse. Uh, he was. He was a horse with a with a great story. He was diagnosed as a wobbler, as a, as a weanling, and he was sold for only $50,000 as a yearling. But uh, he belied to the so-called experts and, and Mark Johnson trained him as a two-year-old, Saeed trained him as a three-year-old. Uh, he was one of the greats for Godolphin. Um, as you said, he won, yeah, he was three out of three as a two-year-old, the champion two-year-old winning the Dewhurst Stakes. Um, an elite miler, mile and a quarter horse at, at three. Yeah, he was he was a dominant horse of his year. He injured himself just before the Eclipse Stakes, so he stood in his southern hemisphere before he stood in the north and he had a yeah he only stood five seasons here but he had an immediate impact he you know, he got faint perfume who you know well mm -hmm. uh, in his first crop he also got captain sonador yeah he was a terrific horse down here and unfortunately injury prevented him from shutting throughout his career but wow what a stallion he turned out to be i think he covered uh, he sired 161 stakes winners all up um lope de vega is his best son at stud so far um, and he was from his first crop. Lope de Vega's side 99 stakes winners so far, so he's proven that Shamadal's a great sire of sires. I think every son of Shamadal at stud has sired a stakes winner somewhere or other. So, um, yeah, what we've got to look forward to is immense. But we're here to talk about the sire sons in particular, and Australian breeders are just so lucky to have some wonderful representatives to choose from amongst your Dali stallions. Well, we'll start with Pinatubo. Eat, sleep, win, repeat is uh, the tagline that our, our uh, nominations man, uh, Arvin Shadi, came up with. And wow, that's perfectly apt because he was a very laid back, relaxed horse who got to the races and just did what he did. He never did much in the morning, um, but he did plenty in the afternoon. He kept it all for race day and he just got better and better. You know, he started off at uh, Wolverhampton, a lowly track in England, uh, went through Epsom to Royal Ascot, uh, won the Chesham Stakes at Royal Ascot and course record time for a juvenile. Uh, then he went on to, uh, to Goodwood, but it was in the National Stakes in Ireland that he really announced himself. But it's Pinatubo accelerating away in the Goffs, Vincent O'Brien National Stakes. Dominant win by nine lengths, quickening clear from the furlong, and, and Timeform de described it as the, uh, the defining juvenile performance of our era. They made him horse of the year as a two-year-old. Um, not many achieved that. And of course, Caro, after the National Stakes, he went on to win the Dewhurst. Uh, equally impressively, you know, beating a, a high-class field. You know, they were trailing in his wake. The Royal Blue, Peter Tubo, who's in front of him now. Six from six, Peter Tubo wins by a couple. He came back, of course, at three, won the Prix Jean Pratt. You know, I mean, I guess COVID obviously has played with his, his time in being able to come to Australia, but so great to see him here now. Uh, it is terrific, and everyone who sees him, wow. I mean, he's such a powerful... Think about the Shamadal line and, and, you know, and his relation street cry is they've got substance. They've got their trainers love them because you can train them. Um, they've got plenty of size, substance, bone. Um, they're masculine horses. He's a great example. He's got, he's got great quality for a Shamanal. He's got a beautiful head on him. He's got great depth and length and strength and he moves well. Um, wow, he's some horse and, and a terrific racehorse. You know, he was, a, he was an outstanding racehorse. Probably at his best at seven furlongs and below when they tried him at a mile, despite the fact that his father won at a mile and a quarter and his mother won at a mile and a quarter, he didn't get a mile. Uh, he, he basically ran three times second in a mile in elite company. At seven furlongs and below, he was never beaten and uh, he was an absolute star. How's he been received? Describe, you know, confirmationally, obviously there's so much speed there, but what sorts of mares do you think he suits? Well, I think he's going to suit a lot of mares, and, and the Danehill line suits Shamadar very well. But he is a heavy horse, and breeders will have to watch that. Um, you know, they don't, you don't want to send him too heavy a mare, I wouldn't have thought. 
but uh, he's going to find a lot of, um, everyone who's seen him so far just ogles over and they all want to send two mares instead of one. Uh, he's covering a full book this year, you know, extremely popular as you can imagine. So he's going to get a, every opportunity. We've got a lot of nice mares lined up for him. He's an art cross um, to all of the Danehill line blood we've got. We know that Chamadar works so well with that Dan Danehill line, so uh, we're in good shape. Victor Ladorum and Barcelona have got it at the moment. I'm looking at Victor Ladorum, another son of Chamadar here at uh, Kelvinside, a two time Group 1 winner in France. I mean, that is elite. We're talking about some of the best bred horses in the world compete at that high level in France. You know, all those Aga Khan horses, and, and it is just elite racing on a, on a global scale. Uh, won the Prix Jean Luc Lagardère. Uh, what an effect that race has had on the breed. Absolutely. I mean, he won the right races. I think that's the key message. And so he, he won the Lagardier, as you say. And then at three, he came back. He was trained by Andre Fab, the same as, as Lope de Vega was. And at three, like Lope de Vega, he had a couple of prep runs into the French Guineas. And then he won the French Guineas, like Lope de Vega did, and like Chamadal did. So he has a very similar profile to his father and to his father's best sire son. So I think of all the... Th four stallions by Chamadar that we stand, he's the one closest in profile to his father and he could be the one, you don't know. And again then how, how do you describe him, you know, for a mare owner thinking, well I wonder if, if the, the, the match up works. He's got plenty of depth, he stands about 16 hands, um, he's got a uh, you know, lovely head, a good head for a Chamadar again. Um, plenty of range. He's got tremendous depth of girth and a tremendous hind quarter. He moves beautifully. He reminds me of Street Cry the way he moves, and Street Cry's from his family. So he's by Shamadal, from Shamadal, and Street Cry's family. So he's got a lot going for him. Um, again, I don't think he's a difficult horse to mate. King Neptune on the far side has led all the way. Earthlight now sticking his head down. And of course, you've sent some of these, these wonderful sons of Shamadal to Northwood in Victoria, which is great for breeders. Um, you know, they're really improving the, the mares, the brood mares within Victoria. So, you know, some of these better brood mares get a great opportunity to get that Shamadal blood. Uh, starting with Earthlight, of course, the pre morning Middle Park Stakes winner. Again, an elite racehorse at two. He won five from five as a juvenile. And, and I guess here the main talking point is the Newmarket track record in winning that Middle Park Stakes. Absolutely. They've been racing in Newmarket for a long time, Caro. And to win a, you know, a group one two-year-old race, probably the, you know, the top six furlong two-year-old race in England, um, he won it in track record time. But Shamadal's 2017 crop, so that was Pinatubo, Victor Ladorum and Earthlight. What amazing crop that was. I mean, he was, I think it was his 11th crop, uh, but a breakout crop nonetheless. I mean, to have the three top two-year-olds in Europe was unbelievable. Earthlight was one of the very best, you know, as, as you said, five from five as a two-year-old went over from France to England, having won the pre morning Group 1, won the Middle Park. What a superstar he was. So he's interesting. He's from a new approach mare, so the Galileo in there as well. And again, such a great outcross for Australian mares. But has that speed. He covered 109 mares last year. And, you know, what's the, the general feeling about Earthlight? I mean, he's spoken of as being the spitting image of Lope de Vega. He's very much an Aussie horse. You know, people who see him in Victoria, we had our parades in Victoria last weekend, and he was the horse that got most, you know, most plaudits and got most business because he's a real Aussie tile horse. He's, he's strong, he's muscular, he's got a great walk to him. Uh, he's got a great temperament, he's a real dude. Um, and you know, everyone who sees him just loves him. You know, people you know, like us two-year-olds in Australia and he was a very, very good two-year-old. Blue Point is chipping away at Batoch, the near side under William Burek. And Blue Point, of course, what a remarkable tough sprinter he was. I mean, he had the, the runs on the board over, over a number of seasons, won three Group 1 sprints at Royal Alaska. You know, and the beauty of Dali is, of course, the mares he's covered in his full book so far. Animato, the dam of your latest star in Animo, who could be absolutely anything. Golden Slipper winner forensics, Kanedna Russeting, you know. He is such a great outcross for that Dane Hill blood, isn't he? Yeah, and he was, he was a horse that Charlie Appleby said, announced himself straight away. As soon as they galloped him, uh, he knew he was good. He won a group two as a two-year-old. Uh, he won group races from two right through to his five-year-old career. He was, um, he was an absolute star racehorse. So of course, he's still the only horse to have won three group one sprints at Royal Ascot. He won the races that Aussies can relate to. So in Dubai, he won the Alquaz sprint. That's been won by Hortensia in Buffering. Um, in England, of course, he won the Sting King Stand Stakes. Now, that's won this year by Nature Strip. We all follow that race so closely. And then he won the Diamond Jubilee, which, of course, Black Caviar won. So he won the races that we can relate to. He was an absolute superstar sprinter. He's been well supported since he got here. He's now in his third season here. He's been superbly supported by all the best breeders, with obviously particularly in Victoria, but you know, plenty of people from New South Wales have sent mares down as well. So he's going to get every chance. His oldest of yearlings going to the sales next year. 
Um, they sold well as weanlings. They're great sorts. Like he is himself, he's, he's probably the most like his father in terms of looks. I mean, their heads are almost exactly the same. Yep. But uh, who's going to pick the best one? I don't know. Uh, that's the lottery, isn't it, of it? But some great opportunities for mare owners in, in New South Wales and Victoria. You know, and we've spoken in the past about the incredible record that, that Dali has here in Australia with imported stallions, you know, such as obviously Winx and Sire, Street Cry, the close relation to Shamadal, uh, Shamadal himself and so many others. So it is great to get that incredible representation of elite European blood. We are talking the elite of the elite, aren't we? I think, I think that's it, and it's... it's yeah, you've got the opportunity to get a really, really good horse, a Winx, you know, or a Happy Clapper, or, you know, one of those, you know, Shamadal starred Abel Friend in, in Hong Kong, you know, he was a great sire in Hong Kong as well as here, yeah, Pakistan star and horses like that. So we're talking about the ability to get an absolute top notcher like an Animo, you know, it's, that's what we're, that's what these shuttle horses can give you. The G1 Goldmine focus on Shamadal and his sire sons show the four stallions featured on Bread to Win generally follow the pattern in their racing careers, similar to a sire son such as Lope de Vega, and that is speed. Interestingly though, if you want a miler, it seems four-time group winner Pinatubo and three-time group winner Victor Ladorum are your best bets. Looking at the Knicks that have worked best with Shamadal, Danehill comes out on top with 14% being Group 1 winners and 17% stakes winners. Sadler's Wells, Green Desert, Darshan and Galileo are also prominent. And another feature is that mares from Galileo's dam Urban Sea cross with the Shamadal line produce nearly 12% stakes winners to runners. Well, we love our Aussie bred stallions. We're so fortunate here in Australia to have access to this elite international outcross blood thanks to the huge global Dali operation. Time for a break on Bread to Win. Next up, Sejinho studs Brian Clark with the filly who beat Winx in Arrowfield Studs, horse who made you love racing. So I guess I'm a bit of a latecomer to the Australian uh, racing scene. Uh, but when I first came to Australia, I guess the horse that really, I guess, uh, captured my imagination was a mare called First Seal. Uh, so when I arrived to Australia, I came to work at Think Big Stud uh, for Dato Chan Chinnam and uh, Duncan Ramage. And at the time, there was a two-year-old there called First Seal. So she was in work with John Thompson. And she had her first, uh, first start, and then she came back to the farm for a spell before the Spring Carnival. Uh, when she came back to the farm, she was just um, really she was just the most beautiful mare. I'm a great type. You can see she made a lot of money as a yearling, and you can really see why she was uh, an outstanding, uh, very physically impressive um, filly at the time. Uh, so she went back in for uh, the spring carnival. Um, I remember she won her maiden, and then she was I think a pretty big odds in the T rolls. Uh, and I remember back then having pretty pretty decent wager on her at the time. Uh, at pretty big odds, I think she was about 20 to 1 to win the T-Rolls, so um, obviously she went on, she won that race and then progressed to win the Flight Stakes, the Group 1. Uh, so really that was the first horse, I guess, that in Australia that ha I had something to do with that was really a top liner. Obviously she made a bit of a habit of beating Winx. Um, at the time we uh, didn't quite realise what she was beating, but um, you know, Winx obviously went on and did what she did. Uh, so First Seal was a really outstanding, very high class mare. Um, and also, you know, physically, you know, a very beautiful, very well put together horse. Um, so really, she, she's a mare that really um, captured my imagination. And I remember, you know, she used to go back and spell there, and then she'd come back through the pre-training at Think Big Start in the racing barn there. And it must have been so exciting, every time she'd come back and have a spell, because you'd be able to look after this, this wonderful mare, who by that point was a Group 1 winner. And tell me what, you know, if, if you're fairly new to it all, to be involved with that sort of mare. Yeah, it was a real privilege to be able to work with a mare like that, really at the start of my time here in Australia. It was a great privilege. Every day, she, you know, come in, she was very, um, she had a great temperament, but at the same time, you could tell she was a strong-willed, she was, was a strong-willed horse, and um, we could see why, why she was so good. She knew she, knew she was good. Um, but to come in, you know, to have her spelling there, and then obviously doing her pre-training as well, um, I guess getting that exposure to, um, a, you know, a really top-line horse, 
um, yeah, it was, it was a great experience. Yeah, and I guess now, I guess you, you feel that now when you're involved with like Vegas showgirl Winx's mother and, and all these wonderful mares here at Sejano Stud. Yeah, I'm very lucky I'm, to work at, you know, there was lots of great horses, Think Big, and then come to Sejano, there's a um, groomer band here really is littered with, um, you know, stars of the past on the track. Um, so I've been very fortunate with, um, with the horse I've been able to work with in, here in Australia. And first heel's going to be much too good, wins it by three. Winx is second. That is bred to win for this week. We'll be back again next week with more great stories from the thoroughbred breeding industry, including a look at the speedy son of So You Think Peltzer with gorgeous first foals at Twin Hills Stud. I'm Caroline Searcy. I look forward to seeing you then.